Hey guys, it's Layla. Today we'll speak about craniocerebral injuries. Starting with the types of injuries, you have focal, which is in a localized area, and then you have diffuse, which is widespread damage. Starting with the focal, you have contusion and you have hematoma. So we will start with contusion. A contusion is like a bruise. It can be associated with multiple micro hemorrhages, as you can see in this CT. That's the coronal view. And this is the axial view. Then you have hematoma. Hematoma is a blood clot that results after bleeding. So you have three different types of hematomas. You have epidural, subdural, and intracerebral. So the epidural one is mainly due to skull fractures and mostly due to the middle meningeal artery or a dural sinus that has been torn. For epidural, you'll see that the blood is always trying to reach the midline. This is how you can differentiate between the epidural and the subdural. For subdural, it is mainly caused by accidents or falls, and it is due to veins of the brain that are torn. And in subdural, it's more concave, and it's not trying to reach the midline. Here you can distinguish between epidural and subdural. Intracerebral, the worst prognosis, and it is within the brain parenchyma, especially due to the leaking of an artery. It can be due to high blood pressure, it can be due to trauma or blood thinning medications, etc. It can also be called a hemorrhagic stroke. Moving on to diffuse cerebral injury, you have concussions. These are mild due to a head trauma where your brain moves within the skull, so it shakes the brain. And you have a brief loss of consciousness, but otherwise it doesn't really lead to permanent neurological deficits. Then you have diffuse axonal injury. It is due to a stretching force on the neurons that lead to tear and damage. They can lead to multiple foci of hemorrhages, micro hemorrhages, as you can see here, they are spreading into the gyre. Then you have traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage, which has very high mortality. It is due to a tear of the small arteries within the brain. Fresh blood on CT and MRI is white in color or hyper intense. Moving on to fractures, you have four different types of fractures of the skull. You have linear, depressed, diastatic, and basilar. Starting with linear, it is just a break in the bone, but it is immobile. The bones do not move, and hence it doesn't need surgery. Then you have depressed, which is a part of the skull is depressed or sunken. Impression fracture is similar to depressed but it is more severe and both require surgery. Then you have diastatic which is along the suture lines and it mostly occurs in infants. For example here you can see along the lambdoid suture there is a fracture. And then you have basilar, which is the most serious one at the base of the skull. Here you can see the axial view. It has led to a bit of hemorrhage. It typically presents with bruises around their eyes, which is known as raccoon eyes, and behind their ears, known as battles sign. To end this video, we will see the classification for traumatic brain injury. You have to keep the duration of the unconsciousness in mind, the Glasgow Coma Scale, and the post-traumatic amnesia. 
So mild is less than 30 minutes, moderate is 30 to 24 hours, and severe would be more than 24 hours. For mild, the GCS is 13 to 15, for moderate, 9 to 12, and severe less than 8 or 3 to 8. For post-traumatic amnesia, mild, less than 24 hours, moderate is a week, 1 to 7 days, and severe will be more than 7 days. Alright guys, that is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.